thank you to BetterHelp for sponsoring this episode. We all have goals and want to be happy, but there's always just something in our lives preventing us from getting that, isn't there? Well, BetterHelp is here to assess your needs and help match you with your own licensed professional therapist. BetterHelp is available for clients worldwide. It's more affordable than traditional offline counseling, and financial aid is available. BetterHelp wants you to start living a happier life today. Visit BetterHelp.com battle. That's better, H-E-L-P, and join over 500,000 people taking charge of their mental health with the help of an experienced professional. And as a special offer for death battle viewers like you, you can get 10% off your first month. Just go to betterhelp.com slash battle. There are so many heroes with crazy over the top superpowers, but there's one class of character everyone respects. The master of the martial arts. Like Sanji, the sous chef of the straw hat pirate searching for the one piece. And Rock Lee, the hardworking ninja warrior from the village of Naruto. He's Wiz and I'm Boomstick. And it's our job to analyze their weapons, armor, and skills to find out who would win a death battle. Somewhere in the vast ocean is a seafaring land of science, the Kingdom of Germa. When the King of Germs decided to churn out some kids, he got an awesome idea. How about he make his kids into killer, emotionless super soldiers? What could go wrong? He forced his queen to undergo surgery that would enhance their children during pregnancy. Yeah, she wasn't much of a fan. So she took a drug meant to counteract the effects to hopefully ensure that at least one of her children was, you know, emotionally stable. A surprisingly low bar to aim for, but hey, good for her. And she pulled it off. While most of her children were violent sociopaths, one showed no signs of their shared superhuman genetics. This is Sanji. Oh, the poor kid didn't have a great childhood. I mean, he was surrounded by actual superhuman bullies. But he found peace in cooking for his mom. Well, uh, until she died, and then he was thrown in a dungeon. Look, I told you his childhood sucked. Fortunately, Sanji eventually escaped thanks to some help from his sister who I guess was slightly less of a sociopath, and made his way across the sea as a cook. Until he was shipwrecked and left marooned. Poor guy just can't catch a break. But Sanji found a new daddy in the form of pirate Red Leg Zeph, who trained him in his own martial art, Black Leg Style. Wait, shouldn't that be Red Leg Style? I'm confused. It's an art that focuses exclusively on kicks, which worked out swimmingly for Sanji. No. Puns are my job. I don't need you pirating that from me. As a chef, Sanji firmly believes his hands have no place in a fight. To him, they should be kept as pristine as possible for cooking, which is frankly wonderful etiquette. Even if his own life is in serious danger, he will not break this self-imposed rule. You gotta hand it to him. Black leg is like taking capoeira, taekwondo, and every other martial art with high flying footwork and mixing them all up like a stew. And just like a tasty dish, he named his attacks after a bunch of French words which I definitely cannot pronounce. Though the most important to recognize is Diable Jam, also known as the Devil Leg. By moving at incredibly high speeds, Sanji builds up friction between the air and his leg until it literally catches on fire. To do so, he'd have to be moving his legs over 11,000 meters per second. Yeah, and that move's pretty lit! Clearly Sanji's super fast! He's quick enough to keep up with the pirate captain Luffy, who effortlessly dodged laser beams from a robot man bear guy. It, it's a long story. That's one piece in a nutshell. A very, very long story. Sanji's got plenty of other skills. He can kick your face so hard it makes you as handsome as that devil George Clooney. Oh, brother! Then he can start blasting and Danny DeVito you back to normal with another. And with the skywalk technique, he can literally walk on air by, listen to this, flicking his heels so quickly he creates dozens of miniature sonic booms beneath his feet. That is insane. Note to self, never skip leg day. In fact, forget the other days, all days are now leg days. Sanji eventually found a true family as a chef for the Straw Hat Pirates. With them at his side, he began a hunt for the All Blue, a mythical location where every ocean in the world connects and all manner of sea life exists. A perfect spot for a chef of the sea. But just like all of us, he had to deal with his first and much crazier family at some point. And when he did, 
He got an upgrade! This is the Raid Suit, a miraculous outfit with hover boots, invisibility, air boosters for increased kicking power, and a snazzy cape! Conveniently, the suit is stored in an easy-to-carry canister that can be opened for a magical girl transformation, huh? like so! Oh, is this beer? Wait a minute, if that's my beer, what am I drinking? I'm gonna either need to go to the bathroom or the hospital. While Sanji may not possess the superhuman ability of his siblings, he has learned something similar yet entirely different. Hockey. Gesundheit. This power lets people push their body to new limits in a bunch of different ways. Like with armament hockey, he can make himself hard. <laughs> Specifically to strengthen his limbs for ironclad defense and stronger attacks. However, Sanji's own speciality is Kenbunchoku, or observation hockey. With this, Sanji can detect the presence of others, including through walls. He can even predict future events, at least to some extent. And hanging with the straw hats let him push his abilities to the limit. He's strong enough to keep up with the likes of Zoro, one of the deadliest swordsmen in the freaking world. And he could battle the marine Fujitora, who could summon meteors from the sky, the largest of which, when compared to the island of Dressrosa, appears to have a diameter of over 780 meters, and thus a kinetic energy of over 12 gigatons of TNT. So, like, he fought a guy who could basically blow up a whole island in a snap, and then some. Let me know the next time you find a cook who can pull that off. He has his fair share of weaknesses, though. Sanji sees himself as a gentleman, and thus refuses to fight a lady at any cost, even his own life. And, uh, he's absolutely terrified of drag queens. That didn't age well. But even with the setbacks and a horrifying childhood, Sanji is a man of the moment, an adventurer with a goal. One day, he will surely discover the All Blue, and whatever else comes after that. I was looking for a light. Appreciate it. Konoha, the village hidden in the leaves, is a land of phenomenal ninja. From Naruto to Sasuke to Kakashi, we've seen them show off their awesome talent on death battle before. But one ninja student sought to prove that talent wasn't naturally born. That talent could be achieved through nothing but hard work. This is Rock Lee. At first, Bull Cut's path to being a ninja was anything but promising. See, the best ninja can use all sorts of ninja magic called ninjutsu or genjutsu, but not Rocky over here. Essentially, Lee was born with a disability, unable to access the living chakra energies within his body the same way his peers could. But while this certainly made things difficult for him, he continued to train, pushing himself to become a splendid ninja. Too bad he got paired up with Neji, who might as well have the word prodigy stamped on his forehead. Uh, hello, irony. With no real family to speak of, Lee had no one to guide him on his difficult path. Fortunately, he found inspiration in the form of a fellow bowl cut individual. Might Guy, a man who is simultaneously incredibly cool and incredibly weird. Guy saw Lee's potential and trained him to master the art of taijutsu a ninja's physical prowess using chakra, body, and mind. So he's not gonna be shooting fireballs or popping up clones of himself like the other guys, but he's gonna learn how to punch harder than anyone. Actually, that's exactly the point of his martial art, Strong Fist, a style that's all about shattering bones. Not just any ninja can master the form of Strong Fist. In the hands of a novice, it's a dangerous technique. One wrong move, and you could accidentally break your own limbs. But Lee quickly got the hang of it and even learned some awesome moves, like this killer Azuna drop on steroids, the primary lotus. A technique so useful that many other ninja tried to copy it for themselves. What a bunch of cheaters. He's also got this potion, and if he drinks it, he goes into a super zen state that makes him basically invincible. Incorrect as usual, Boomstick. That was due to American censorship. Right, it wasn't a potion, it was sake. Somehow, Lee's susceptibility to alcohol turns him into an instant expert in the drunken fist, based on an actual martial art. You know, Wiz, I've always wanted to try that style myself, and uh, I'm not gonna lie, I've had a few. Watch this! Gonna... Uh, oh. Correction. Real drunken boxers only emulate the movements of the inebriated. They're not actually... Ow, 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 ow. <laughs> Piece of cake. Anyway, when Rocky Road isn't totally sloshed, he's got one more ace up his sleeve. 
the eight gates. In the world of Naruto, eight metaphorical gates exist within the human body, inspired by real-world Buddhist teachings of opening one's self to achieve enlightenment. But in Lee's case, it's opening a can of whoop ass. Think of it like that horrible myth about humans using only one small part of their brain. Each open gate increases Lee's abilities in some way. For example, the first gate allows Lee to utilize 100% of his body's potential by removing inherent mental and physical inhibitions. The third gate lets him expend enough chakra all at once to perform his signature technique, the Hidden Lotus. Eh, the first few gates are pretty chill, even if they do wear him out. Thing is, the more gates you open, the more dangerous it gets. But Lee wasn't afraid. By the age of 13, he could unlock five of the eight gates. More than enough to keep up with the likes of Neji and honorary Green Day member Gara. He's almost as quick as Naruto, who's dodged light speed attacks. And when he opened the sixth gate, he used it to slice up a giant meteor. Comparing the scale of the meteor to Konoha's mountainside, and assuming Lee contributed his fair share to this group task, he must have produced a force equal to about 230 megatons of TNT. The average nuclear bomb has a yield of about five megatons, so getting hit by six gate Lee is like having 50 nukes exploding in your face. Now, Lee has a admittedly never used the last two gates. However, there are multiple claims that he's mastered them by adulthood. And frankly, as the successor to Might Guy, who did unlock all eight gates, Lee should be comparable. Guy could make a blast the size of an island with the seventh gate. With the eighth, he could go head to head with the ultimate big bad, Madara. This creep was packing more power than when Naruto's chakra blew a hole through the moon, a 400 petaton explosion. That's way bigger than 50 nukes. Hell, the eighth gate can bend the fabric of space. Just one small problem. Opening the eighth gate puts an immense toll on the body. The moment you open it, you've essentially guaranteed your own death. Yeah, but who cares as long as you take your foe with you. Under Guy's training and with the help of his friends, Lee has shown that he is indeed a splendid ninja though he never quite got the chance to prove himself against Neji. Well, according to the wisdom of Gammy Boomstick, one's dead and the other isn't, so I think I know who won. Tact, Boomstick. Now the villager's expert instructor in taijutsu and with a kid of his very own, it seems Rock Lee's hard work truly did pay off in the end. To protect and maintain one's own ninja way. All right, the combatants are set, and we've run the data through all possibilities. But first, if you want some of Lee and Sanji's fiery determination in the sack, check out Blue Chew. This episode is brought to you by Blue Chew. Blue Chew brings you the first chewable with the same FDA-approved active ingredients as Viagra and Cialis. No matter whether it's day or night, on an empty stomach or a full one, you'll be good to go whenever the opportunity arises. Blue Chew is prescribed online by licensed physicians, so you don't have to go to the doctor's office or wait in line at the pharmacy and it ships right to your door in a discreet package. Since they're made in the USA and Blue Chew prepares and ships direct, it's cheaper and less awkward than waiting in line at the pharmacy, and you don't even need to leave your house. If you're looking for more confidence where it counts, Blue Chew is the fast, easy, and cheaper way to enhance your performance. And who could say no to that? Right now, we've got a special deal. Visit bluechew.com and get your first shipment free when you use our special promo code, BATTLE. It's just $5 in shipping. Again, that's B-L-U-E-Chew.com promo code battle to trade free but right now it's time for a death battle i refuse to eat this it's far too mild lacking in the fiery use of true spicy curry mild this is the most perfectly balanced curry around <laughs> I see your fighting skills match your skill in cooking. <laughs> Show your chef some respect. Respect? I'm a I'm a paying customer, and that curry was awful. <laughs> Don't, don't you like that? Look at me like that? Ah! 
picky eaters are the worst. Um, why is everything so loud? Fifth gate, open! Gate of view! Open! Huh? Seventh gate of wonder! Open! It is Finish your food. I'm making you cough up whatever you've already eaten. Can't you manage? <laughs> Looks like mild suited you best. My dish was too spicy for you. Kyo. Well. I guess Lee can finally have that bout with Neji now. Given Lee's years of experience and the power of the Eight Gates, he definitely kept Sanji on his toes. But Sanji was no slouch himself, and like Lee, has trained all of his life. With his speed and observation hockey, he handled even the unpredictable drunken fist. And while the Seventh Gate meant Lee could probably blow up an island, that's not as big as the meteors the Straw Hats could handle. Simply put, Lee had only one somewhat reliable method of a possible victory the Eighth Gate, a suicide move he's never actually used before. Not really the best argument for a win on its own. But gate number eight could take on Madara. Sanji's tough, yeah, but he's definitely not on that guy's level. A couple big hits from the Eighth Gate and Sanji's nothing but pace, so what gives? Well, Lee would have to hit him first. While Sanji's power may not compare to the Eighth Gate, his speed is far beyond. Recall when his fellow rubber rabble rouser Luffy, uh, very patiently waited for a light speed laser to reach him before dodging it. To pull this off, Luffy would have had to move 13 times faster than light. Sanji can regularly keep up with Luffy, and this was before he even got his super fast raid suit. Don't get us wrong, the power of the 8th gate is incredible. If we were to run this fight a hundred more rounds, Lee would surely land a winning blow with it a few times. But more often than not, Sanji's speed is pulling this one off. Given his speed, raid suit, observation hockey, and his fiery footwork, Sanji had everything he needed to outlast Lee's youthful determination for a victory. Guess you could say he had a leg up on Rock Lee, hand over fist. Or I guess foot over fist, but you get it. The winner is Sanji. Thanks for watching this episode of Death Battle. Come back next week to see previews of our upcoming matchups. If you want to watch more stuff, you can click the boxes right around here, and you can always pick up some DB merch at store.roosterteeth.com.